800-284-2191. Into a Friday in February. This is the first Friday of the month now. We've made one lap here. We're at the 7th, and uh, last week we started Friday on uh, Saturday. So the first Friday of the month here on the Insight Program, live on radio. Uh, Mayor Bob McManus avails himself to our questions and uh, comments here. So, good morning. Good morning. It's good to be here. Here we are again in the uh, month of February 2020 is zooming right along. It is. I remember last February it was it was much colder, so I was just listening to you doing the weather report, and it's like, oh, we'll, we'll take a couple inches here and there of snow. Yeah, it won't be. You can't escape it. I mean, you live no. here. <laughs> so Right. But... Uh, we were double digits below zero. Uh, I said that uh, in February of 2019, we had 14 days where we started at below zero yep. in the morning. And then you pile 53 inches of record snow on top of that, and it was one miserable month. You have a lot of people in good moods when that happens. Well, our... Oh, wait, sorry. Not good moods. <laughs> yeah, that's a little much to ask in today's society. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Are you happy? No, I'm just here. Right. <laughs> well, all right, I guess that's a good thing, depending right. on your attitude. Right. Uh, but with the snow that we had, that budget for the city lapsed or reset, if you will, in a calendar year. So now we're operating off the 2020 budget. It, it, the, the budget falls on calendar year. The snow or the winter season, December, January, February, falls over the time when things are divided up. Correct. Did we come up short, and how are we going to make up for that? Um, we're still tabulating the, fi- the final numbers because last year was extreme. Um, not quite sure yet what that final number is. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a little over. Um, because, it, you know, keeping the roads safe, is not, you can budget for it all you want, but it's a, pu- it's a public safety issue, so it has to be done. You can't say, okay, we've, we've spent enough money for today, we're not allocated for that, so just be careful. Um, so it'll be very, very interesting to see what the final numbers were for last year. Um, however, you know, this year it hasn't been bad so far. Just as I was coming here, they were out there, uh, preparing the roads for Saturday, and, and it, that all goes into the tabulation. Um, so right now, we just don't know what that final number was. That's uh, one of those things that you budget for a average year and let the chips fall where they may. That's all you can do. You... That, that's really all you can do. There's, there's just nothing else that you could do because, it's, as I said, it's a public safety issue, and you just you can't get away from that. We are in a public uh, works director is being replaced, or have we made a final hire yet, or is that still up in the air? That's the street. Public works uh, d- or director me, is yeah. Dan Connect, and okay. he's, he's done a great job. But uh, uh, there's interviews that are, that are taking place over there. Um, and so uh, right now there's an you know, interim supervisor, if you will, and, um, but we don't have, uh, don't have anyone new yet. So, and it's an, it's a, it's a very important uh, department and, um, and they've been doing a great job, um, uh, for the last month or so. So, uh, so we're optimistic about that, but it'll be good to get somebody in there that gets to the, gets to the helm that can control things. Cause it takes a while, um, you know, after you get in a job like that to get your bearings, see what see what you could do new, see what you can implement, see what of the, the uh, old things are, are actually good. Um, and, and that takes a little while to get in. Street superintendent is one of those jobs that you don't hear about until something goes wrong. They're usually the guy who is blamed when the roads are rough, which you can't do anything about this. You know, right. It's where we live, but when they're plowed or not plowed or when do we plow and how much money do we spend doing that and how much overtime trying to watch your budget and be mon- money conscious of that. Uh, if everything's going fine, you never hear his name. Right. And that, you know, it, it's a, you bring up a very interesting point because it's, it's one department where um, you really can't be influenced by – um, by complaints, you have to come up with a game plan. Like they're, you know, they're out there de-icing, getting the roads ready. Their their plan is already implemented to, you know, through this storm that's coming in on Sunday. Um, their their plan is already implemented. What's very interesting is when we get a big snowstorm. I I get a bunch of calls. 
some of them have, is is you can imagine why aren't the roads you know why aren't the streets taken care of and, and, and why are we doing this and we've got to get out sooner and and they look at their plan on they wait until it gets to be a certain amount of of snow down to go out because you can't overdo it or you're going to hurt the roads you can't underdo it or it's going to be unsafe um, but at the same time you know what's very interesting is i will get calls from folks that are upset because the trucks are everywhere and they can't get around the streets or it's early in the morning and the beep 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 on those things is is waking them up so when you're in that streets thing you've got to go by your plan you've got to set your plan you've got to go by it one thing i don't think a lot of people really understand is how much development goes into their plan of you know once they decide to do roads if if we're going to get three to four inches that's pretty easy to take care of when you get upwards of that eight to nine inches and whatnot how long is it how long is it going to take to do um is it coming in a big spurt and then it's going to taper off there's a lot of different things so a lot of times our streets people will work eight hours um and then they've got to be off for eight and it's not uncommon if we get a big snowstorm that they're out at two or three o'clock in the morning getting ready getting the travel day ready um so it's you know that's a that's a big thing and then you run into the other issue of if it is heavy snow, they tend to um, park all the snow, I guess, if you will, in the middle of the road, and then they'll go in later with the graders and, you know, get it off the street. Well, during the time that they stack it up in the middle and they get rid of it, it it's, a little bit, um, it's a little bit dicey for citizens. Maybe they can't see if they're making a left-hand turn or something like that. So... You know, when you live in, in an area like this, that's just part of what we deal with. And um, But uh, they do a great job, even though we, we have an interim uh, supervisor there. He's doing a great job. And Well, there have we'll been policy there. books that have been uh, laid out, uh, whether that policy, and it can change. There's no doubt about that. It's not law. It's just a policy. But it's tough to say three inches we go, two inches we don't. Because sometimes a three incher doesn't have as much effect as a two incher, depending upon how things fall, and people will complain because. But when you talk about the figure of thirty thousand dollars for a full plow in every street, I mean, if you're doing the whole thing, if you're doing our major arterials, no. But that's a constant. They're always running on those, trying to keep it open for the ambulances that come to this town and for the ones that are in the town. Right. But but a full plow, I mean. <laughs> You can't just do that four times in a day or four times, you know, even a week is tough on the budget. Right. Well, and it's, you know, if, you, if you're doing too much plowing during the, during the work day and you're going up and down central, then, you know, where does that snow go? And you've got those big banks then on the right-hand side. So then when people get out of their cars to go in those businesses, they've got to tromp through the snow, which might have an, an ice base. Um, it, it, it's a safety issue. You know, one thing that's very interesting is, is we do hear, I hear, you know, we come in on 97 and the road is clear. And then when you get into the town, you know, there's this buildup. And one thing that's very interesting is, I, I just learned this. I mean, I thought it was very interesting because it's something I posed to them. And you can, you know, on our roads here, you're not necessarily going to have the use. And we have a 25 mile an hour speed limit. So on the highway there, you, people are going 55, 60 miles an hour. That's going to that's gonna keep that road drier simply because of the heat uh, from the tires. There, there's so much science in this stuff. Uh, it, it really is amazing. We do, we do our best. I will say this. The city, the street department, they do their best. They are well aware of... The, you know that this is an inconvenience to people and and they do take that into consideration um i will tell you when i first got uh into office one of the things you do is you go around to meet all the department heads and they could you know you meet with their people and whatnot and so the first one i went to was wastewater and i didn't know what to think over at wastewater because you think wastewater boy this is going to be kind of yeah, it's going to be smelly over there, right? I mean, you go over there, and it is just as clean as can be. Uh, Sam, he just runs an incredible department, and I went in to meet these folks, 
and they were like just excited they were they're scientists i mean i think there was 18 of them and and they there's some bacteria or something and the and the way they treat it is with cheese curds and i'm like okay i've lost it now you now there's another use for cheese curds the first thing reminded me it's the same process you add bacteria in right it does and it was just amazing but these folks over there that work in that department are they are just so thrilled with their job and what they can do and when they see a challenge what's very interesting is they don't let the challenge bother them they attack it how can we beat this and it has a you know and that in that division they've done an amazing job their debt has gone down dramatically and they're finding more and more ways and we're treating more and more water and what's interesting is you know we're maybe 50 percent capacity so we have They've, they've just done a lot to make that more efficient. So that was the first one that I went over to, and I'm like, all right, I'm kind of liking this mayor thing. I mean, look at everybody's so happy. The next day I went over to the street department, <laughs> and as happy as these folks were in wastewater, it, it was these folks were beat up. I mean, I walked in, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. And there was just a big snow a couple days before, and they're like, Bob, you don't understand – this nice little old lady, you know, she was saying all kinds of bad words at me. And, you know, and they're going out in the neighborhoods trying to do a good job. But, you know, I, I, I must say I've been out where I've just done my, you know, I've just shoveled my driveway. And it looks beautiful, right? I've got everything. I was out there for too long and um, just got it done. And I'm walking up, and then I'm enjoying and, and relishing on the work that I just did. And then you hear, you hear that, that beep, low beep, rumble, beep. and I'm like, "No, they are not." <laughs> and sure enough, here he comes, and they got to do it. They got to clear the road and whatnot. So uh, you go those back of us out in there. this part of the country, we recognize that low rumble. Oh, and I go looking down the road, going, "You son of a gun!" <laughs> that, is, that is exactly it. But it's a necessary evil I because know. if they, you know, if they, if they don't then we've got an unsafe road and i can't tell you jeff how many times there's this there's this place in alaska and it's a big grader and this grader is going around the corner at well i can walk faster than this grader is going around the corner and but when it gets to a driveway it throws out an extra bar so there's nothing that goes into the driveway and then when it gets just past the driveway it opens it up and it goes on and on and so I, every season, I bet I get that a couple dozen times from citizens that say, hey, we should, we should look at this. If you look at how much longer it would take for our streets people to do that, it just, it's just not efficient. But when you see it and you see it in action and you think, wow, that would be a good idea, it, it, does, it does get your attention. But what we see more and more is, you know, where we live there's you know there's folks that are that are older and it's not uncommon for somebody to take their snowblower and go help their neighbor out and stuff like that we we said especially on especially on the heavy snowfalls yeah talking with mayor bob mcmanus you can too 384-2191 384-2191 if you're listening to us live here on this first Friday in the month of February, or you could be watching us on video, Marshfield Media Access, their YouTube channel, or on the Spectrum Digital tier at 989. Uh, you can see us there uh, as well for the month as the mayor comes in and talks with us. And um, that's always an issue this time of the year, and the calendar rolls over and we kind of reset, and we hope that maybe now we'll be under <laughs> to make up for what we were over right uh, last time and we've been doing pretty good so far this winter but the plowing part of it is one thing and then they came around with the snow removal and they cut the banks off on the side and they push it in the middle of peach avenue and then like you said you can't turn into where you want to go and they used to do that at night for the most part try to do it overnight but mm -hmm. there just isn't enough time i guess in the hours in the day so they finally uh, got that taken care of, and uh, everybody was happy, and now we'll be back to this uh, again from time to time, I suppose. Um, the uh, budget does also include for that is the equipment. Uh, things get broke. Uh, there are new things that are on 
the budget to be had. Some you can't wait on. Others have been pushed back, and they're already overdue for new things that need to be taken care of. The city of Marshfield takes care of all of the pavement, as I understand it. Mm -hmm. But they also make holes from time to time. Mm -hmm. But there's private contractors then that also make holes from time to time. Do you understand the how the interplay happens there between who's responsible for what and making sure that that hole is taken care of and that it happens? Um, the call initially is always to the streets department, and then they will, um, uh, you know, we had one issue with the uh, uh, garbage folks that made a, uh, they went over a sidewalk or somehow something got cracked. So anything to do with the pavement, streets, or sidewalks always goes through streets, and then they will determine who's going who's gonna, to who's gonna help pay for it or fix it. And they normally do those things really relatively quickly. You can join us, 384-2191, here on the Inside Program on AM 1450 WDLB. WDLB's Inside Program this first Friday in the month of February. You know that if you're listening live. You may be watching us in video replay here at Marshfield Media Access on their YouTube channel or on their Facebook page or on uh, Spectrum. Uh, their digital tier, 989, is where the government channels are located up at uh, that range, 989, 990, and that vicinity, 991, I believe. All three of those are devoted to city business. And you can give us a call here, 384-2191, on this first Friday of the month. The story came out here on WDLB News about a revisiting of an issue with the Mo, what is it called? Moek Aquatic Center? Aquatic Center, sure. The funding and who's giving what described the situation and what was that meeting all about or what was that discussion so that was very interesting we wanted to look at um currently the the, the pool the fundraising committee has raised about one point just over 1.2 million dollars so in the six month that has been fundraising that's a that's a pretty good clip um so we're very very happy with that and we're very happy with the public the, the folks that have have uh, donated and but we got to get to three million so there are entities within the city for instance, the utility, the EDB, and the CBB, Convention and Visitors Bureau, um, that would like to contribute. So now you have to look at that, and, and there was a big open discussion about it, that if they contribute, is that part of the $3.5 million of public, you know, the public borrowing that we're going to go towards the pool, or can that be private? So, for instance, the, the, the CBB, they get money from all different entities. And so can, can they fund for that? Can the uh, Marshfield Utilities, can the EDB? The EDB would have an interest, possibly, in investing because that economic development. And one thing that, that we are doing, you know, some of the arguments for the pool are, are we, you know, we need it. We've got to have it there. We've had a pool for, you know, 80 years, and it's the same one. A big concern other than that is we are literally competing with other, uh, you know, with other municipalities, Wausau, uh, Wisconsin Rapids, and our, our major employers here, of course, the, um, you know, the, the clinic, rail, and whatnot, they are trying to attract people to come in, so it is, it is, a, it is. We're trying to make ourselves a little bit more competitive with having these other things there. So, um, the discussion was, can those can Marshfield Utility contribute, or, as you know, in essence, privately, um, and be part of the three million dollar private contribution, or is that, you know, is that technically? city money um and so there was a long discussion of that and the end result was um 
not to allow that. Let the private funds be the private funds that come in, and city funds be all go through the city. Uh, so it did make it, it did make perfect sense to do. It would have, um, with the amounts that I think folks were talking about, it would have got us up, you know, north of one point six. But um, at, at the end of the day, we know we're going to we know we're going to get to the three million. Um, a normal uh, what, uh, fundraising time for an amount like this would be sixteen to eighteen months. And so starting in July and then wanting to start um, work technically in July, that's only 12 months. So we're kind of started behind the eight ball there a little bit as far as the norm of getting the money. So um, we're just going to continue to fundraise, continue to go out after the money. You know, the best time to send this out for bid, because we're, we're, we're now down to where we finally got our final requirements of what is needed. But when you go out for bid now, all the people that do this have already staffed for, and they already have their projects for summer. So if you go out to bid now, you're, you know, they're going to bid, but it's typically going to be a higher bid. So then you have more cost. So it doesn't make more sense to send out the bids. The best time to send out bids for this type of project is in November and December because the, those companies don't have their work orders yet. And so they're much more apt to give a lower bid. Um, so now we're now we're to that debacle of, of okay, well, what do we do there? And so um, there is a, there, still a chance that we could put it out for bids, see if we still come in within, um, you know, within budget. Otherwise, it could be that it, you know, we go next November. Um, we have to look at what is fiscally the right thing to do. Um, and so those decisions are being made. So it sounds like an interplay between fundraising and bid or price process here. Because if you get people to commit, they're not going to commit forever. It's like when you know we need to cut this off at this time. And that, that deadline has to come along at the same time when you know what you're going to spend. Right. Yeah, but we're close enough to where, um, you know, one thing is if you contribute, I believe it's over a thousand dollars, you can cut that up over three years and, and higher than that, the bigger donations are given over five years. So if we would, if we would have to delay it from say a, a, uh, a July start to a September start or worst case scenario, kick it back uh, one year, it's not really going to affect fundraising that much. I don't think it would affect fundraising at all because people are really happy about the pool. Um, many people are very happy with the fact that it's staying in the same location. But it's a big project, you know, and, and when you go out there, the people of Marshfield are so generous and so gracious. But when you go out and you're asking people for money, especially right now, at tax time, you know, people are waiting to figure out what they're going to need to pay tax wise. So, you know, my guess would be is ap after April 15th, we'll be doing, you know, then you're going to see more and more donations coming in because then people will be looking for, you know, the, 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 the tax write off for the next year. So um, we're very optimistic on, on the fundraising. We, we feel we are ahead of the game. Um, but it's this is a big project, so a lot of moving parts. Talking with Mayor Bob McManus, you can too, 384-2191, 384-2191, talk, uh, talking about the uh, Marshfield Outdoor Aquatic Center, which will be constructed at the current Hefco Pool location here. Just for the rest of you that aren't all that familiar with the Acronyms here, EDB is Economic Development Board, CVB, Convention and Visitors Bureau. Having them uh, donate to this project, those are entities that, if I understand right, though, are trying to bring dollars into the community. Correct. This project seems to be one that is of the benefit of the citizens who live here. Is there a real thought that people are going to come here? I know Rainbow Falls was ahead of your time, but there used to be a water park over in Plover. That was a private entity that drew from all across central Wisconsin because they made it at a magnitude that 
a wave pool and all those things like you had them, you know, before you had to get to the Wisconsin Dells level. We're just talking about, uh, for I thought here, entertaining our citizens. Uh, we make it an a uh, attraction for people who want to bring employees into the area because of quality of life. But I don't know if that falls under EDB or CVB. Um, well, e- economic development. I mean, right? Helping our that would help all of our businesses. So, for instance, you know, we've got uh, this beautiful new athletic facility. We've got the Y has expanded and it's beautiful. Um, we've got the baseball parks. We've got the zoo. We've got all of these different things. So, when people come in, let's say that they're coming in from. I don't know, maybe there's a big soccer tournament here. And so people are coming up from Milwaukee and they go and and they come up, they stay at the nice hotels, they go to the athletic fields, then, you know, they could play baseball. Then what do they do if they've got a, you know, their nine-year-old has a game at nine o'clock in the morning and six o'clock in the evening. They would go over to the aquatic center. Now the coach might not be that happy about it because the kids are going to use up some energy. Or maybe they go over to the zoo. And then what happens is a lot of people like that start thinking, maybe I would move to Marshfield. Um, what's interesting is there's a uh, an auction going off right now where people could actually put in to win tickets to come to Marshfield. If you go on the comments and you look at that, you see the love of Marshfield. I mean, a lot of people say, if you look on those comments, Wow, this is a great thing. I hope I get it. I haven't been to Marshfield in four years. I really can't wait to come see it. I hope I win. And so many different things like that. Those aren't the type of comments you hear necessarily from folks that are here because we live here, right? So we know all all the different things that are going on. So I think for them, it it makes perfect sense to do. Um, The visitors and convention, you know, why would it make sense for them? Because it gives them another attraction to the city. Now you've got this major uh, aquatic center. You've got the zoo. You've got the drive through zoo. You can go in and you can see the bears. You, you, all of our beautiful uh, trails that are there. It's just one more thing that makes Marshfield a beautiful place to live. So those absolutely would fall into their, um, into their attractions, if you will. Now... That's all subjective, but it, I believe it would make sense. The branding that they've done or talked about new branding is Marshfield Made New. Yes. <laughs> Here's one example of that. Absolutely. The athletic fields are another example of that. So it kind of follows with their branding, and maybe that's why they came up with that or used that as a, a, a moniker. Yeah, well, there's there's many different buildings that have been repurposed. The Brew Pub was repurposed. The uh, the Big Figgies building was repurposed. And so there's a lot of things here. We don't want to lose the, um, the the history of Marshfield and, and and the people love it. You know, one thing that I that I just love about the city is you can go out to a to a restaurant and it's like you're walking into your to your family dining room you know you see people and they're friendly and and my wife my wife is is the most diligent person that i know she'll get up at some ungodly hour five o'clock in the morning to go for a walk and it's it's too early jeff but but that's what she wants to do so i support her um and i know that she's going to be safe and and you see a lot of people that are diligent like she is out walking five six o'clock in the morning it's safe and i think that's part of the part of the magic if you will of marshfield it's a great place and this aquatic center really could i think it could boost that talking with mayor bob mcmanus you can too 384-2191 we're live on am 1450 this first friday in the month of february here coming to you or in maybe in rebroadcast on video on marshfield media access their youtube channel facebook page or on Spectrum 989. You can join in here anytime here on WDLB. WDLB's Inside Program, the first Friday in February here on this uh, 
first lap around the week of February now, up to the first full weekend here, and or second full weekend now as we get through the month, and uh, time for an opportunity for you to take advantage of talking with Mayor. Uh, let's go to the phone here. Um, Pete, go ahead. Yes, good, uh, good morning, gentlemen. With the uh, funding of the Aquatic Center, a couple things just comes to mind. Um, the uh, public fundraising was supposed to uh, fund three thousand or three million bucks towards it, and then the city was supposed to meet another three million. Correct? Yes, Mayor actually, Bob? actually, uh, three and a half, three and a half for the city, three million Act- from the citizens. Actually, actually, I don't think that's correct. The original agreement was raise three million, the city will kick in another three million, and then. Oh, I don't know, maybe eight, 12 weeks ago, they came up with this uh, soft money or soft funding, and the city just, just out of the clear blue came up and said, oh, sure, we'll give you another 500000 for the soft for the soft money. Well, um, let, me, that, let, me, let me clarify that. That was, um, there were many council members that were there when it was at the, at the meeting, and that was a irritation point um to say the least so that was a long discussion that took place and there was these uh soft cost really should have been involved in the original bid so it included such things as that the fundraising costs and other things there that really should have been uh forecasted well, properly well i understand that but it wasn't but it wasn't and, Correct. and that's the that's the crux of this thing. If it wasn't there, the city has no point saying, sure, we will contribute an, an, another half, half a million dollars because you did your books wrong or you did your, your calculations wrong or whatever. The city is not obligated to do that and should not have done that. And now... Well, let me, let me, had, let me, help, you, let me help you with, with what that was because when Justin Casperson came to the council meeting, the, the the actual amount was 500000 in soft cost. You're 100% correct. And the request at the time was, do you want us to take $500,000 off of what we're going to put in? So make cuts to maybe you don't have as many slides or maybe you don't have as many amenities or something like that. Do you want us to do that? Or well, in, in absolutely a, that should be done. Absolutely, because... Because we've committed way too much money to this thing already, um, and and you have to realize that this thing is up and going for three months, maybe. You know, it it, it it's it's an albatross of money, and now the, and now the city entities like the visitors bureau and whoever you were talking about want to contribute more, which is totally wrong, just for the fact that. Our tax dollars goes into running their um, their shops, their offices, whatever it is, and now they're going to contribute money to this thing. So instead of possibly maybe our taxes be lowering sometime, they will either stay stagnant or raise again, and and that is just wrong for the people of Marshfield. And that the is people it, of Marshfield. and that is exactly what the council said. Uh, because it did come to the council, there was a long discussion on it, and and they said that at this at this time, the public needs to re- the, the council, the city will do the three point five million, and that is from city funds, and anything else needs to come from private funds. So that that's why that put the kibosh, if you will, on those entities being able to do it, um, if they chose to, because that's what the council decided is. Let the city, what the city is committed to, the three point five million, be completely separate from the three million that the that the public is going to um, contribute. If 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 this is such a great idea, now you got to realize a couple things. That of what do we have? I always say we like to say we have twenty thousand people in our community. It's not actually twenty. It's it's eighteen nine or whatever the sign says. But but there's more because there's that live in the outlying areas Correct. who are not counted in, in, in our population. Correct. But say, say for an instance, 20,000 people. How many, how many of that 20,000 people 
actually use the, the aquatic center. One percent, maybe a half of one percent, and we're spending all this all this money for high figuring one percent of the population. That's 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 wrong. There should be a private entity that comes in and says, you know what, we can make money running this pool or aquatic center, whatever you want to call it, and let them put the money into it and let them run it, let, let them reap the, the benefits from it, or let them fall on their face. The city should not be doing this at all. And that is, and, and I do appreciate and acknowledge your opinion. Um, it, most of the muni- municipalities, if you look at Wisconsin Rapids, they're putting up a huge, theirs is $11.5 million. And we're not in any kind of, we're not in a competition to get, oh, they're doing 11.5, we need to raise ours. We're not looking to do that. Um, and the other municipalities have them. Again, it goes back to what I said earlier in this, in this show is it does help when people come to visit that you have these extra amenities. Your argument, though, however, is a valid argument that we have heard. And when the council a couple of years ago was doing a lot of public things with the public, do you want a pool, do you not want a pool, the overwhelming amount of people wanted a pool. However, there are some that do have um, this opinion of we really only use it for three months. Um, not everybody is going to use it. So do you, um, do you go ahead with it? But when all of the, the studies were done and the surveys were done, overwhelmingly, there were a lot more people that were for the pool than are against it. That does not take away the legitimacy of the folks that don't think it's, it's uh, worth that. It, it doesn't take away their, the legitimacy of, their, of you know, their argument, and those arguments should be heard. Well... As, as, as everything else in, in city government, I, I believe that the city government should weigh everything out, and if it's for the betterment of the community totally, or 50.1%, go ahead and do it. And, the, and, that, case, and, that is, and that is exactly what happened. When they did this um, survey, when they did this survey back in 2016 and 17, when there was a pool committee that was put together, I understand that there were members of the public. Um, they looked at nine different locations and everything else, and the response that they had at that time. Now, I was not mayor at the time, so I can't give you all the specifics. Um, is that the the location of the pool to remain the same had overwhelming support, and there was overwhelming support at the uh, uh, to have the pool. In all the open meetings that we have had since I've been mayor, regarding the pool when it was going to go out to bid. Was it, was at, it, at, ever, put on, was it ever put on the ballot? Should we spend $3.5 million on a pool and let the city of Marshfield vote on it? I don't believe that's ever happened. No, it was and never believe, put on. And I, and I believe if it was, that the majority or, or that it would be ruled down. And and you could be right. It was never um, it was never put on as a referendum or anything like that um, as a vote. Um, but I will tell you this: at all the meetings that we've had, that are all open meetings, um, and they're on our agendas and they're well publicized, we've not had anybody come to a meeting in a voice of dissent, like to bring up the arguments that you're bringing up, which, as I said, are valid are are valid. But when you look, so what happens is, and I will tell you, when people come to meetings and express their points of view, when all the aldermen are there and can hear them, it has an amazing impact and amazing influence. But if you're just going by the information of all these committees, I mean, the committees, you know, when the council gets recommendations from committees, these committees go through hundreds of hours of research and 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 work and a lot of work to come up with a recommendation to do something even the my understanding is when they had the that study of where it should be there was nine different sites that they went to and looking at the pros and, and cons you're talking about hundreds of hours of, of I, research I, I, that goes in so that so this is why it's so important that when 
folks are concerned about it that they come to those meetings because these are all posted. It's easy to go to our to the city website to see when the meetings are. It's also always posted for when the actual common council will be discussing it. And people can come to those and voice their opinion because that's when the aldermen are all there, captive, and can hear legitimate concerns like what you have. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to go back into Marshfield history just a, a, few, a few years. Sure. Um, Marshfield likes to take money and build Taj Mahal. Look at, look at the fire department. It's really a nice fire department. We put a lot of money into that fire department. Um, was it was it that necessary? A newer bu- uh, a new building may have been necessary, but boy, that's a state of the art fire department. We spent way more money on that than, than needed. Our police department we, we 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 built that, what twenty maybe thirty years now ago could be something like that, and now they're saying it's inadequate. Um, we're we're going to need more space, which which I know we just bought the Baltus. Uh, station and so forth, so we have the we have the more state space, but it's still going to be millions of dollars into remodeling, doing all this. You know, the city just loves to spend money. They built all the they built all our new schools ten fifteen years ago. Um, taxes go up, taxes com- completely. They, they very seldom, if I can ever remember, my property taxes ever going down. They try to stay stagnant, but and, and that I and that I do give the common council credit for. They say, well, we can't continually tax tax our people because our people are moving outside the city to avoid the to avoid getting taxed. So you gotta stop this tax and spend our money. You just gotta stop this, and and whatever whatever the consequences are. Let them fall. Let, let, like with the motel, let the private entity come in and build a motel. They wanted the city to to, to improve the uh, infrastructure and all that. The city finally said, no, you want your motel built, you do it. You pay for it. You're going to reap the benefits of it, you do it, which was a very smart thing. And I think the city's got to start doing more of that and quit spending people's money. So, and you bring up you bring up very good points. In, in order, to, it, it, I would encourage you to go take a tour over at the fire department. Every bay, every single bay, is accounted for. So it's not what you would call oversized. It, I think they've got a good space management system. In in the fact that's there, the police department is. You know, we had somebody come a year ago, and the, uh, the common council met with the. Uh, police and fire commission and designers that came over and they were saying that to update it was uh, going to be about it could be anywhere between seven and ten million the interpretation of that is it's going to be at least 10 million or if you make something new it's going to be between 13 and 15 million the interpretation of that is it's going to be 15 million um, and at that time we all thought that's just that's just too much now the police department i mean if you want to go over there and you want to see how squeezed a department is that's where they are and the issue is 30 years ago when you had when or 30 or 40 years ago when it was built you didn't have these cars that have a hundred thousand dollars worth of electronics in them that need to be indoors because they're 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 either heat or cold sensitive so there's a lot of other things there. However, that's just going into a C, you know, a CIP, a long forecast planning. There's nothing um, that is that is eminent on that. In regards to the hotel, the um, in what you're the point you're bringing up is the TIF, um, and at the, when that came and that was turned down. Now, um, let's just understand that building currently or before with the prior owner was tax exempt no taxes now when this new building comes in there's going to be an enormous amount of tax um just because of it it's going to be a seven million dollar building 
Now, the way it was, what was being asked was, if we make that a TIF, then the tax that, that we have not been receiving, that we will now receive, would go to pay for the roads that are immediately around there. That's not going to help. That's not going to help the hoteler. That's going to make it better for the people along Upham and the surrounding streets. So, in, so that was voted down because of what you're talking about. If they want to come in, we'll run, let them come in and do their own show. Um, now, who does that hurt? Now what happens is all the people and all the businesses up and down Upham and those surrounding streets, when those surrounding streets get done, they are going to be, um, they're going to pay their assessment. So you've got, you know, the city pays for it, and then all those property owners, homeowners, and business owners get assessed a certain amount for the road just out in front of their home. And they would not have had that assessment if we would have gone the other round and put it in a TIF. So, okay, I, I, I understand that aspect, but I live in a residential area of the, of the city of Marshfield. Sure. They, they came in and they um, dug up my road four or five years ago, they put down nice new blacktop. Guess what? I ended up paying, I don't know, about, about thirteen hundred, thirteen hundred sure. bucks for for my little stretch. Yep. Why shouldn't Why shouldn't everybody pay their stretch of assessment instead of putting it into a TIF district and letting letting the city pay for everybody else instead of paying for for your own? And that is that is a legitimate argument. That is a legitimate argument. And that's because we don't want other people to get to get the benefit. You try to look at, at, at how you can benefit the most people. But your point is a very, very good point. And, and, but understand that it, it was voted down. It is not in a TIF district, and it is going to be that way. So exactly what you're asking for is exactly what your council did. Correct, on, on, on that one aspect right. of things. Correct. But, 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 on mo- but on most every other thing... The city does like to tax us and spend it, tax it and spend it. And sooner or later, I've been here 40-some years, um, sooner or later, actually it's almost 50 years, sooner or later I'm going to move because I'm, I'm, I'm getting so sick of Marshfield wanting the best of everything. And, and we don't have to compete with Wassa, and we don't have to compete with Rapids. We have to we have to do what's right for Marshfield, and 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 just keep that in mind when when you want to spend more and more in our, our of our money. Well, if you, if you really take a look at it, I, although I do appreciate your opinion, um, when the clinic and when large employers are telling us we really do need more things, um, it, it it does. It, there are a lot of people that do think that. But the other thing that's very very important. Is and I believe me, I'm I'm not an advocate of raising taxes. Um, I'm <laughs> I'm actually on the other side of that idea. But the other side of this is I am an advocate for paying the bills. And let's understand our tax rate here in Marshfield is I believe nine, uh, right around nine sixty. Nine twenty six. It but it just went up. Uh, it just right. went up uh, thirty cents. So it's an, it's actually yeah. nine fifty six yeah. per thousand. If you look at Stevens Point, Stevens Point is at uh, nine ninety nine. Wausau is right around there, and Rapids is over twelve dollars. So if we're and, and this is a common misconception, I had I had a um, uh, a open house for people to to come in and 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 discuss all these items, and a gentleman brought up the fact that our taxes are so much higher. And when I showed him what our tax base is. Compared to all of the surrounding cities, he was shocked. He just couldn't even believe it. Now, in it, and I would challenge, do you live in Marathon County or Wood County? Wood County. I would challenge you, and I'd, I'd love to get your response, and I appreciate this conversation too, by the way, because you're bringing up great points. I'd like you to go and take a look at what your taxes have gone up to over the last 10 years. And I think you're going to be shocked. I had one gentleman come in. This guy, he's the most diligent person jeff when he came in he had the taxes he paid from 1992 when he bought a building to today how much he paid in taxes and how much he paid in trash collection um because it's a five-unit building 
every year, every dime accounted for. He's paying less in tax now than he was then. And you saw the taxes go up and down. But I would challenge you, take a look at what you've actually paid over the last 10 years. I think you're going to be surprised. Yeah, the other thing, I'll just throw this in, too. The other thing we've got to keep in mind with our tax bills, there are five other taxing entities on that tax bill, even though you get it from the city of Marshfield. School taxes have gone up. MSTC, the Mid-State Technical College District is on there. Don't forget Wood County. Um, All their taxes have gone up. From 2004 through 2013, Marshfield's tax rate did not change. It held steady for nine years. The city for about the past six has implemented increases of less than 1% in each of the past now seven years, if you add 2020 to the list. That's just the city of Marshfield. Keep in mind, there are five other taxing entities on the tax bill that you get just so happens from the city of Marshfield. That's not all city of Marshfield taxes on that. I, I, under, I understand it that, It doesn't Mike, sound like but... you do. Oh, sure I do. Okay, well, I, I've been, the, the, I've been incorrect, tax, I've the been information a, on the tax increases for the city of Marshfield is inaccurate. The one, one why, final why are you saying it's inaccurate? Because I just said Mike. from 2004 through 2013, your city of Marshfield taxes did not change. They stayed the same. And, and I said that that, that that's happened, that, that, our, uh, that our council has kept that at a, at a low rate or, or a, uh, an even rate for a long time and we appreciated that but now it's 2020 and we've had less than one percent over the past six years that's not too bad considering what we're getting that that, i'm just saying that our taxes in total if i was talking to the school board i would tell them the same thing keep keep, quit taxing us so much quit quit buying new buildings quit buying do everything just to keep up with Stephen's point and walk. Yeah, I, I think just, they're just trying just, to just, just, just keep just keep our money, our, our tax levies lower on every aspect of my of my, prop, of my property. Well, believe me, they're trying. I don't see you at the meetings, and if you would hear some of the discussion, they are trying, but it's hard. One th- one thing that you Gentlemen, can't do is is that I, I just wish you to just to take a look, and if you can look at your own personal expenses on if if you feel that over the last six years you've been able to go up one percent it just wouldn't work for most people people are paying more for everything gasoline and everything so to try to now your overall argument of hey stay fiscally responsible i get it i hear it but i think if you look at the full big picture you're going to be far more pleasantly surprised than uh than you see we're not and, and, and I will tell you, when people come, um, the doctors, the nurses, and uh, road workers, you name it, when they come here, they are looking for good schools. And, and that is one of the greatest things that we have. We have both, uh, this is what we have in Marshfield, both public and private, uh, elementary, middle school, high school. We have a four-year university here as well as technical colleges right here. That is such and, and, and these other cities can't say that. Um, so I think it, it, it does give Marshfield a lot of great options. But at the same point, y- your point is well taken. We still have to be fiscally responsible about it. And what if up? you look at how we're doing in comparison to the other cities from a tax base, I think you'll see we're doing a pretty good job. Mayor Bob, what other city can't say that, that, that they have technical college, uh, the, the UW, and private and public schools in their cities, of, of the cities that, that you always mention. Wassa has it, Point has it, Rapids has it. The extent to which our, you're right, and our, our population is, is substantial. Well, it's, it's pretty close to a couple of them. My point is we have great things going on here, and I would encourage you, because you have great arguments, talk to your aldermen, bring those up. You know, so many times when I do hear arguments like this, what I don't hear is, but you've got to get to a council so that all of the council members can hear you. And I'd love to have you on a committee just because you've got great, just because maybe you and I don't agree on certain things doesn't mean that, that, that it can't work to work together because we need those. That's, that's the only way we know if we're getting better or we're getting worse. 
I agree. I, I, I agree with you on a lot of things, but there's some things I don't. And I have been on a couple uh, committees in the in, way in the past. I was on a historical committee and a couple other things. It uh, doesn't really matter, but um, I don't like being in the, in the public sector. I just I just don't care for it. But I think if I air some of, some of my grievances to you over the airways of WDLB, which I believe is one of the best radio stations in the state of Wisconsin, even though right now I'm not quite happy with, with Mike Warren, but I still like Mike <laughs> I, I think if I get this aired, that there's other people who feel like I do, and we feel that we have a, 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 a not a very loud voice because when when you want to spend money, everybody's out there trying to raise money, and there's there's some of, there's a lot of people who think they're just going to raise taxes. We can't do it. We can't do anything about it. So just you know, don't even bother about complaining or anything. And so see, they're going to they're so going to do what they want to do. Well, and that's that's something that's easy to say to government, but but the, but the other side of that is, is if people don't come to council meetings, and make the good arguments that you're making, how's the council supposed to know? How's the I mean well, because we get a certain thing, and so there is a responsibility. And I would love, man, if we could figure that out, we could figure out a lot of issues, because we're this is not um, unique to municipalities i mean i don't care where you go if you talk to other mayors or aldermen there's always this issue of of how do we get folks to come and talk about those issues either at the committee level or to a council meeting during public comments now we're fully aware that people have you know they work they got to take care of this they got to take care of that so certainly aren't expected at everyone but Boy, when these subjects are going over, come talk to come talk about them, because it does well, give the alderman something to do. Or send a letter that you would like read during the public comments. Um, well, I'll section. I'll have to try to show up when I can. But I see that that we're way over, and, and uh, yes. we should have started like five or six minutes ago. And, <laughs> and Mike's got to give us his update and so forth. So. Well, I appreciate your call. That, I got to go back to work. All right, <laughs> gentlemen, have a good day. Yes, appreciate your call. Talking with Mayor Bob McManus here on the Inside Program here on AM 1450 WDLB. Yes, we did run severely over time, but sometimes that happens when you have a discussion that you want and I want to let take place because what else are we going to have? Music? <laughs> <laughs> it was I mean, a good discussion. And it's uh, local. All right, thank you for your time. Yep, thank you. Uh, Mayor McManus here on AM 1450 WDLB's Insight Program for this first Friday in the month of February, coming to you live on WDLB Radio and also in rebroadcast a video on Channel 989 on your charter, uh, I say that all the time, on your Spectrum Digital tier. My apologies to my media partners there. And also uh, available on Facebook and Marshfield Media Access YouTube channel. We'll talk to you next time here. Uh, stay with us. We've got the music coming up. Not to short sell that. We th- we'd like to think we got the best of that too. But uh, in the meantime, we like to uh, not cut off a discussion here. So uh, we will talk to you again in the noon hour with news, weather, sports, farm news, and more.